to all our tea time viewers all the way from Bangalore and I am Chaiti Narula. I'm standing right here at Prestige Golf Shire in Bangalore. Now what does it really take to make a golf course of 18 holes like this one? What is really the real estate sector outlook for the year 2014 going forward for the South Indian geographies as well? Discussing this on the show with me today is Irfan Razak, the chairman and the managing director of the Prestige Group. On the show this week, we have Irfan Rizak, Chairman and MD Prestige Group. Even today, there are good quality funds who are interested in uh, investing in real estate. In fact, every day we get someone or the other who is interested, who wants to do some deal or the other with us. In news, Booba Watson ends two-year drought, wins Northern Trust Open. And Thomas Eichen beats Oliver Fisher in a playoff to claim the Africa Open. Zach, welcome to Tea Time. Thank you. It's lovely to have you on the show. And what a lovely golf course you've built, 18 holes. A championship level golf course indeed. That's right. In fact, it's been a, quite a challenge to build this course. Really? And it's been quite a passion also to do it. How did it come about, this golf course? What is the story behind this golf course, really? Uh, it's a long story. There was Let's this, hear it. There was this piece of land, 300 sure. acres, that was offered for us. Right. It was, you know, completely converted for building a golf course. I believe that, you know, this was something that you really didn't want to go and spoil this property. Right. We said the best thing that can be done here because it had that natural undulations and all of that. We said this, it's best suited to do a golf course. Of course, it had to have a flavor of real estate. Sure. And we said uh, we can build mansions here for the rich and famous. Of course. Who can come and live here and uh, enjoy the environment. Now, there are many reasons why people really build golf courses. Some people look at uh, developing real estate around it. And the actual sale of real estate is something that earns them a revenue or even lets them break even. Or people build it just out of passion because they have a lot of land lying around. What was your reason out of the two? See, we didn't have land lying around. We actually bought this land. and Acquired. We acquired. We bought it and uh, it, we paid quite a fancy price for How it at that time. How many acres would that be? This whole piece of land is 300 acres. So you bought 300 acres yes, from the market. and uh, to get one piece of land, 300 acres, without any, uh, you know, litigation, with proper title due diligence, uh, is not easy. Absolutely. Land acquisition is one of the biggest challenges so uh, builder, I said developers it's a would face. Huge opportunity. And I said the best thing that you can do is contribute this to the city of Bangalore. Right. Build a golf course which will bring in people from anywhere else in the world. Sure. Now people go in to play a golf game in Bangkok and Pattaya and all of those places. Why not Bangalore? And one sure. more reason was this was close to the airport. It's just 10 minutes from the airport. And uh, we are building the hotel now, uh, which is under construction. It should get done in the next couple the of Marriott, years. If the I'm Marriott, not mistaken. Uh, with a convention center. So this will become a hot spot, a uh, place where you can have conventions, weddings, and uh, uh, golf holidays, and all of that. Basically, the Marriott would be a golfing property. That's right, well. absolutely. That's we chose Marriott to be a golf resort partner with us. How are you monetizing as of today? Have you broken even since the time you started? How many years before you break even? It'll take a lot more time to break even. Now, see the mansions, we have about 200 odd mansions. Sure. The day I sell all the mansions, uh, and uh, I recover the money from the sale of these mansions. That's the time I'll monetize and that's the time probably we'll say, look fine, the golf course is done because it's not about just building the golf course, it's the running the golf course. Right. You would have walked through our clubhouse, we've done a world-class clubhouse with sure. all the facilities. We don't have anything like this anywhere in India with the, the, the type of um, you know, overall look, look and feel that we have here. So it costs a lot of money to maintain and run it. Right now, it's running on subsidy. Uh, subsidy means subsidy from the company. Right. And uh, we are going negative, but I believe at the end of the day, it is going to be a winner. On that note, let me tee off and we continue our conversation. Okay. Thank 
Thank you. Mr. Razak, isn't it very ironical that golf is really a rich man's sport? And for a rich man's sport, the numbers in terms of corporate sponsorship for golf tournaments or even investments are few and far between. Yeah, I mean, it, it is a rich man's sport, but then it's, it is uh, catching up with the younger crowd. Right. Fortunately, in Bangalore, we have a good uh, uh, younger crowd that is taking up on this game. And with that, I believe that the opportunity for corporate sponsorship is increasing. It has to increase. See, mainly it's, a, it's a what comes first, the chicken or the egg situation. You have to have the infrastructure, now, which is now being created. Right. And with that, I believe the, the sport also will get its uh, prominence. Correct. And uh, you can have even uh, international tournaments uh, no, in what I'm golf courses. What I'm trying to uh, uh, you know, put light on is the fact that there are few people like you who have a great family lineage. They are business families. Um, they enjoy a certain reputation to even get an investment if they want to start something of this nature. But what about the startups of the country? What about the normal entrepreneur? What about the normal man on the road who is entrepreneurial driven and wants to start something like this? It really doesn't add up for that person, is it? I don't think you can, anybody and everybody can build a golf course. It's not that exactly, easy. Exactly. And of course, we can't have that many any golf courses either. It is an in, a huge investment. Sure. And uh, it it uh, probably adds up with hospitality and everything else. Right. So really speaking, there has to be an element of some real estate or hospitality or some other revenue uh, source for us to uh, take the golf course itself. Absolutely. And then with all that, you also need to have that passion for doing the golf course. See, I could have easily in 300 acres I could have kept this piece of land as a land bank, more so since it had a proximity to the airport, mm. all titles clean and clear, and just kept it as real estate. Now, there is something in life that it's just not only about money, yeah, earning money or generating money. It's also about uh, creating something sure. for the city uh, and for yourself, and uh, you know something that is which gives you that uh, happiness and the satisfaction. Sure. Because that probably is much more than any money ca anybody can do. You are, they are leaving behind a legacy. Sure. And that legacy will be there for generations and generations for people to handle and enjoy. All right, so on that note, it's a good time now for us to take a breather on Tea Time. We will remain in conversation with Mr. Irfan Razak and we will throw some light on regulation with regards to real estate. We take a look at his outlook for the year 2014 going forward and discuss the prestige golf shire where we're standing on as well. Take a break. We will see you on the other side. So welcome back. We're still in conversation with Mr. Irfan Razak and we're discussing the real estate sector in much detail, standing right here at the prestige golf shire. Mr. Razak, your company, Prestige Group, has done really well in terms of what the other the afflictions that the other real estate players are facing at the moment, whether it's high debt or tight liquidity scenario. You were quoted somewhere very recently, and I remember read, reading that the reason you've been able to do something like this is because you all know how to differentiate between greed and between need. Let's go over that phenomenon a little bit. Yeah, what I meant was differentiating between need and greed was, uh, basically is to try and create a product which is affordable to the buyer and price your product in such a way that you'll be able to generate the cash flows right. rather than holding on to stock and selling and pricing it at a much higher number and once you launch a product at a higher number you cannot really reduce it for the next customer sure. then you are in a catch-22 situation so our philosophy has always been that look be sure keep your margins for the company which are, which are expected of from your investors and everything else. At the same time, price the product quite sensibly and reasonably that it's acceptable to the buyer, yes. to the consumer. Sure. Uh, the ticket size is right, do the sizing right. And, uh, and it's better pass on the benefit to the customer rather than get into a higher debt and pay the benefit to the banks. That's what I meant between need and greed. Let's talk about regulation a little bit any kind of regular I mean I know that this sector is notoriously known as being very difficult with regards to regulation given the multiplicity of regulation that exists and for builders to and developers to combat that gets very difficult a lot of riffraff hanky panky that we witness all the time in terms of building a golf course like this what is the kind of hurdle did you face see our industry is actually over regulated let me generalize and then I'll come to Golf Shire itself.
they have to get umpteen amount of licenses, right. starting with um, no objection certificates from fire, from the uh, water board, from the electricity board, and the uh, you know the, uh, even even things like uh, the uh, telephones and everything else. Right. Plus the uh, the approved plant itself. So. And then environment. So uh, I think the amount of paperwork that is, gets pushed is amazing. The time that it takes is also quite huge. Sure. So it's, I don't understand. You see, it, it actually slows down the development. It adds to the cost because, uh, because you know the, more, the delay means haul. delay means cost. Absolutely. And uh, we've been uh, trying to educate the governments. We've been telling them, look, it's of no use to anyone. Keep a timeline. If my paperwork is in order, if my drawings that I've uh, uh, done are in place as per the building bylaws, right. and if all that is in place, keep a timeline of 30 days or 45 days as a maximum within which we can get an approval and start the project itself. But that is, that is a desire, that's a dream. But in reality, it takes any time between 9 months to 15 months to 18 months, depending on the type and size of the development. Now coming back to you asking me what is the challenges we faced in getting an approval for Gulf Shire, I was actually very lucky, fortunate, because when we bought this land, this was, there was an already an approved plan for a golf course and villas. On this very on land? On this piece of land. So what we did is, uh, we had to, of course we read it the entire plan, we had to get a modified plan approved, and at that time it was probably our good luck, we had the right people in place, we, we pitched this in as a tourism project, it, it got approved under the high level committee of the government of Karnataka, plus the plans itself. But one thing you see, things will move easily if you go as per rules. The sure. problems will come when you don't follow the rules and regulations. Right. So in this case, we went through all the rules and regulations, we went through all the pitfalls, and I think in a way we were fortunate that uh, the people at the helm of affairs at that time uh, really were a little more sensible, more broad-minded and uh, things went off very well and we got the overall approval in a pretty short time. Mr. Razak, you, you have been lending your expertise and expanding your footprint across Kochi, Goa, Mysore, Hyderabad, uh, many cities in south of India. What next and where else are you likely to expand your footprint? See, at the moment, I believe that we should consolidate our positions in the cities that we are working in. In right. fact, uh, we are expanding our footprint in Chennai itself, in Hyderabad itself, because there's lots more you can do there. There's a huge opportunity waiting to be uh, captured there. And I believe the right way to do is is to really uh, get your mark over there and, and you know get, expand your markets there and get the uh, optimum amount of revenues from these markets. And then once that is done, uh, there's lots more to do. I mean, I can't say that I won't expand to any other cities. The opportunities do keep coming. Sure. But uh, real estate being real estate because it's quite a personalized business. You need to have the right people. You need to have the right management bandwidth. So uh, I believe instead of just going all over the place and then being a flop, it's better you do it in a measured manner. You do it slowly but surely. At the end of the day, it'll, it works. All right, let's do a chip shot. Come. Well, so on that note, it's a good time now for us to take a breather right here on Tea Time. We will continue discussing the real estate outlook for the year 2014 going forward. Throw some light, of course, on Prestige Golf Shire as well with Mr. Irfan Razak. Welcome back and thank you for staying with us. Now, Mr. Razak, when the mining industry was really doing well in Bangalore, we saw a major demand coming in for super luxurious homes. Now, with the IT and ITES going strong, are you seeing that uptick in demand for mid-income households picking up? See, mid-income households actually are always evergreen because, as I keep saying, housing is a need right. and will always remain a need. And uh, if my ticket size is right and if my target audience, which is the mid-income, uh, I think we'll keep on having the volumes, we'll keep the sales. Mm -hmm. But having said that, we can't ignore or afford to ignore the premium and the luxury segment also. Right. 
because they are people who are industrialists. Okay, one segment, uh, like you said, mining is not doing so well, but then one segment gets replaced by the other and uh, one business or the other keeps doing well. So it's cyclical. Sure. But at the same time, the people who have the wealth, people who have the wherewithal, families grow, people re resettle from different uh, cities. Sure. They also are looking for luxury and premium houses. But as I say every every time in every interview, that it's not the, uh, the, the luxury and the premium segment uh, really is not that fast seller. You don't get volumes there. You get volumes in the mid segment. You get value in the luxury segment. Right. But if you have the entire spectrum of products, uh, then uh, you get a winner. In the year 2013, one third of all the property launches in the country itself took place in Bangalore. What would you attribute such stellar figures to and what's your outlook really for 2014 going forward? See, 2013 has been exciting. It has done very well. Bangalore itself has done very well. And I think Prestige Group itself did quite a number of uh, launches and I think we are one of the largest uh, uh, sellers of uh, property in 2013. Sure. And now outlook for 2014 is that it's, we've already finished one month plus of 2014. It's still going strong. Uh, like I told you about Lakeside Habitat, which has really done extremely well. We've got a good momentum and people are committing themselves. Having said that, now 2014 is an election year. Sure. So we'll have about three, four months of uh, uh, the electioneering process that will go on, maybe the the entire approval process will slow down. But I, I presume that. Uh, but at the same time, we have few projects which have already been approved and which we would probably like to take it and bring it in the next financial year, 14-15. So there is quite a number of things that are happening. We have a few more blockbusters in the pipeline. And I believe that 14-15, uh, will be much more exciting than 13-14. Uh, uh, more so because we have uh, Hyderabad with us, Goa, we've got uh, the Chennai, a few projects. So on and all, there's lots of things in the bag, in the pipeline, which uh, if launched and if things go well, which I'm sure will go well, uh, is going to really create the excitement. But weren't consumers a little wary in 2013 overall for the real estate market because the overall macroeconomic scenario was not in favor of consumer spending really with high inflation, be it other factors bogging the economy down with the rupee declining. I mean, has that shaken the confidence of the Ahmadmi? See, this again is a perception. I keep saying this again and again because it's it's... <laughs> The media has been talking about it all the time that there's a slowdown, there is things are not happening right and you know the economy is slow and all of that. But if you look at it on ground, it's a huge contradiction. You know, the numbers are with you for 13. Absolutely. And uh, I think numbers speak more than anything else. Right. So uh, there's no confidence that has been shaken. There's no right time to invest in real estate or buy your own home or buy your property because if you delay, you're only going to land up paying more. And uh, the environment is not going to change for the better. The uh, things are going to get more and more expensive because labor costs, input costs, land costs are going up by the day. And uh, there's no way that you can get a home much cheaper than what you have already committed for and bought. And I, again, it's, it's a mindset. See, I believe if you have a need, number one, if you have the surplus or you have the wherewithal to take a home loan, if your location is right, your builder is right, if the overall concept of the development uh, attracts you and uh, excites you, you should just go for it, make, take the plunge, make the commitment, buy the home. Because the more you delay, the more you procrastinate, you're going to get into that uh, delay mode and then probably you'll never get your dream home. Absolutely. Come, let's finish our game. Let's talk about the private equity and venture capitalist funding in real estate. We are seeing a bit of a lackluster interest from them. Why is that happening? See, private equity came into property in large numbers. There was 
every day there was used to be uh, some fund or the other who's interested and not to say that they are not interested now they are looking at quality developers quality developments initially they just thought that any they can partner with anybody and everybody sure. so unfortunately uh, what did happen was uh, i mean they all coming in for investing money and at the same time getting good solid returns but those returns didn't come now it's nothing to do with the uh, investment itself what they have made but then it's probably they did not invest with the right property or the right people uh, uh, and or maybe uh, they paid too high a price for it in the beginning and the returns didn't come so that set them off and uh, they lost a little bit of confidence mm -hmm. but having said that even today they are good quality funds who are interested in uh, investing in real estate in fact yeah. every day we get someone or the other who is interested who wants to do some deal or the other with us and maybe with the other big guys who have really arrived uh, they they there is a demand for it now your relationship with golf seems to be never ending with given your passion for real estate and given your passion for golf how many golf tournaments do you conduct in a year in a month there'll be at least about two or three golf tournaments that do happen uh, in good days and there's a season when it's uh, there's a lot of rush uh, but it's a continuous process we do keep having some tournaments of the other all the time but my ultimate design goal is to have an international uh, level tournament here with the pros uh, with the pros we did have one with the pros once but that was uh, more of a this thing but i think at the end of the day we definitely uh, would like to have regular uh, uh, international level tournaments here on that lovely note, thank you so much for joining me on Tea Time. It was a pleasure and privilege talking to you. Thank you. With that, it's a wrap from me, Chaiti Narula, from Bangalore at the Prestige Golf Shire. I'm going to see you next week again with another interesting guest. Until then, enjoy the flight of a good drive and may the sport be with you.